When we were in fifth grade starting out club, obviously in high school, um, not only in volleyball but academically as well. She was always, you know, at the top of our class, participating in everything, you know, being a student leader. Um, she was the president of the Latin Club and um, I mean she she always you know wanted to do everything and be really good at everything and I think it's really paid off for her. Sarah's really what we strive to get in all our student athletes here. She is the embodiment I think of what Jefferson wanted in terms of well-rounded experiences in life. It's, it's not just academic, it's not just volleyball for her. I mean, she's active in a lot of social things here on campus too. Sarah's impact when she first got here was, was mainly offense and um, she did help us out with her passing and her serving, but her offense is where we felt the most punch and got the most benefit from her right away. Uh, how she developed um, over her into her second year was that her passing became much more stable and she really worked on her defense and started to contribute with a lot of digs. As the years have gone by, it seems like I just had a little bit more added to my plate each year um, and I've kind of slowly adjusted to that and I'm expected to perform in, in all areas. And I think that it's nice, and I think it makes the, the game a lot more fun. And the fact that if one part of my game's not on, there's another part that I can focus on. In high school, my health teacher just happened to also be my volleyball coach. And so when everyone else would go and have to you know go run a mile or something like that. He would get a cart of balls and take me to the gym, and I would have to practice my jump serve. Um, and he wouldn't let me do it in a game until I could get ten in in a row. And so I remember one day at practice I did it, and from then on I've I've always jump served. It's an extremely difficult maneuver in terms of timing and getting all the pieces correct. Sarah's got one of the highest tosses you'll see out there, but that allows her to take a nice big approach and get a big swing and a lot of power behind it. If you're not aggressive with it, it's the easiest serve to pass. Because unlike a knuckleball serve or a floater like we call it, it doesn't move anywhere. It follows one direct path. It's not going to change directions on you. So what I've developed with my serve is not just the traditional top spin. I've been able to go and incorporate side spins to my serve so that it moves left to right or right to left. You can do a lot of things with it. And we work with it every day. Um, probably about three or two or three times a week we get um, serving and trying to hit zones and it's been a lot of fun to watch it progress because there's really not many people in Division I athletics who can do what she can do with that serve. Just because you're passionate about different things doesn't mean that one needs to be sacrificed for the other. Um, so I think that that was probably the moment where I knew that I could, I could take on a lot and that I'd still have my head above water at the end of the day. We had no idea that she would excel as much in all areas as she would and that's a testament just to her leadership ability. A lot of people like to be around Sarah and her passion for everything she does. She really just wants to be the best at everything. The Eccles program gives students flexibility to pursue their academic passions and that you don't have area requirements so things like a language or a second writing requirement. You don't have to fulfill those requirements but it encourage you to t encourages you to take upper level classes that you might not be able to get into without the Eccles. The Rhodes Scholar is, you know, if she gets that, if she ends up getting that, that is going to be unbelievable and it's going to open so many other doors for her. So I think that she has a lot of opportunities ahead of her. The Rhodes Scholarship is something that in my household has always just been kind of the pinnacle of, of balance and just because it, it does have a root in athletics and that's a huge quality that they do look for. Well, a lot of people have heard the name, but they don't really know what it is. We actually had to look it up on the internet to make sure we were talking about the same thing, uh, but it is it's quite an honor. And for her to be able to go abroad and study for a year over in England would just be a tremendous opportunity for her. When I started weighing my options for next year, it, it fit really well, and they do. They have a, a one-year master's in neuroscience there that I'm applying for. And I think that just making it through the nomination round at the University of Virginia is a huge honor. And, um, the application was, was long and it was, it was tough and you know the interviews are a little intimidating but I could not be happier that I applied. She is the first volleyball athlete on the lawn. We have had a graduate, a fifth year student on the range before but she is the first one to actually live on the lawn and um, it's just a great accomplishment for any student at UVA, much, let alone a student athlete. When I took my tour, you know, my junior year in high school, this was 
where we ended our tour was in the middle of the lawn when the U Guide service took us around. So this has always been a very special place and I think that I've always kind of wanted to be immersed within the rest of the student body somehow. I think that it's easy as a student athlete to kind of isolate yourself within your team or within the athletic population. And this really forces you to get out there and meet other student leaders. And so I think this is, this is a, going to be a defining part of my fourth year and I can't be happier that I did it. The thing about someone like Sarah who's so successful at everything they do, they really have trouble narrowing down what they want to do. And Sarah's got about six eggs in her basket right now for things she could do. So where do I see her three or four years from now? I really don't know, but she's going to be successful at whatever she chooses. My dad's a huge proponent of just following your passions, and that if you do that, you're going to be great at it. And so not really worrying about the small picture. And so that's kind of the mentality I'm taking out of this school, because that's how I that's how I approached UVA when I came in here, and, it, and I could not be more satisfied with my experience here. So I hope to take that attitude into the next phase of my life.